Okay, so taking out the rear trunk brace of an Elantra and suppose like, I don't know, you want to be a real person and go to Ikea sometimes, get some large piece of furniture, this thing's going to get in the way, how do you deal with that? Um, this is not comfortable, taking this thing out. You're going to have to contort yourself into like really, really uncomfortable positions to do this. Not helped by the fact that this is a one piece back seat, I'm just kind of sitting on it right now. Can barely fit my head in here. Um, so what I've done is I've taken out the trim that kind of lines this area. Um, so this one goes, this one goes on the left side. This one goes over here and it covers that side. And this one covers obviously, come on, there's no room here, that side over there. So they join in the center with this little piece over there, and this has a few clips in the center. Really all you do is once you got these two um, unbolted, you kind of just bow them out and they'll kind of unclip from themselves naturally. Um, to take them out is a bit of a maneuver. So, uh, this is cramped in here. There are, how many do I got? Was it one, two, three, four, Let's take seven. Also, light is like freaking impossible in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven pop clips. Seven trim clips, rather. There are two eight mil, um, eight mil, ten mil socket um, screws that also go in there. So that there are two. The two ten mil screws are sitting down here. Like I said, light is freaking impossible right there so one on each side i'm going to put that one back in and these pop cl these clips oh my gosh go in here so should be not not there better right? one like i said light is literally impossible in this area one and your 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 dome light is not going to help you here you need an actual light one two three, four, five, five, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, you can't see crap because again, like you can't see things here. One, two, three, too dark, four, five, six seven and you got the two on the sides so after you take all of those out what you're gonna have to do next is you're that you're gonna find the trim is still stuck in there which is kind of annoying what's attached to are these things so this sucker over here and where's the other one that one over there it's gonna be stuck at those two points the way it's attached is with clips that look like this this is what it looks like on the inside you can see how it's uh it's a flex clip so not flex clip um what the heck you call these things i don't i forget living hinge no snap fit so the way these work is these kind of these can naturally kind of bow in and out They're, these are not one way um you can see there's a little bit of give on the other side it's a little bit angled so that if you tug on it this will collapse in and allow itself to pull out it's going to be really scary pulling these out what I would highly advise you do, basically, is um, pull around, try to figure out where is the binding, which is going to be right here, and right... Ah, oh, don't turn off, come on. Right there. So, you want to wrap your hand around this area on the trim, where it's binding over here, and just yank around that area. Do not, like, pull it, lever it for any, from any other angle. Pull directly at this spot, pull it out and keep tugging and it will unclip a little violently but it will pop out same for the one over here you want to make sure you're cupping this area get around it with your hand get in there and gently just start pull, pushing pulling out and it will unclip so do those two those are really scary and obviously there's a matching pair on the left side once you do that so like that's the one over there on top and that's, that's the one right there on the bottom once you do that, you'll be able to get both trim pieces off. Now, something I have noticed is that you can close the rear seat 
up onto this location without the trim pieces in place. I'm just keep these off. I'm scared about like, like these things are not meant to be cycled. So they're, they have a limited life to them. They're not designed to be coming in and out all the time. I'm just going to leave these out, honestly, and drive the car, see how that feels. Obviously, I mean, it doesn't impact the waterproofing. It'll just make the car louder, which would be nice. Uh, so um, I'm going to leave these out. I'm not going to put them back in. You can see just some deadening material over there. No real issue. And you're not really going to have a scenario where you're going to pinch these. I highly doubt it. These are nicely kind of bundled and harnessed in place. I don't see an issue with that. This becomes unconstrained, but that's not an issue in my mind. And um, so this becomes unconstrained. It's going to wobble around. This is, this is kind of constrained by one of these things. That piece over there would hold this piece of the trim in. I don't see an issue with that. We'll just leave that as is. And I'm just closing. Just leave it the way it is, basically. So, um, yeah. Let's see if I'm missing anything right now. Right, so, yeah, actually taking the, the thing out. This is a 12 mil socket over here, and the bottom one is as well. So, all the way embedded down in there. So, um, oh, right, I'm forgetting. To take out the little pop clips over here, these things, these are not, which go into this portion here, these are not the normal pop clips around the trunk liner and around the bumper. These are much more annoying to get out. These don't have like the little hat that like pops out. This is a full on like clip that like really wants to bury itself in there and really wants to fight you on its way out. I would highly advise you go on Amazon, you look up just literally just Amazon like trim removal tools. You're gonna get an N number of Chinese made things that look like they have like five tools in them for like some, that's just standard basically. You're gonna have this, that. This is the tool to have, these make it really useful this is metal on the bottom and obviously you just kind of jam it up underneath there just pry it out slowly and it'll just pop out these are really useful um those things are going to want to fight you on the way out honestly this makes it super easy so yeah kind of wanting to know on that so for actually getting the trunk brace out it's pretty it looks pretty straightforward um you can use a socket for the ones on the top the ones on the bottom you're not going to be able to fit a socket in there you're gonna need like a a actual um box end wrench or like um, a closed wrench to get in there so i'm gonna i'm gonna get one of those and um actually figured that out um for torque specs i mean i haven't bought my access to the service manual yet so um i haven't looked up what the torque spec would be on this if any i would just imagine just tight um honestly so um now we'll do that at some other point in the future, maybe. Um, obviously, the access to like the actual service manual for this thing is going to be like 40 bucks for a week, so I just haven't sent it yet on that, but probably there's a torque spec somewhere out there. But figure this would be kind of interesting because like a lot of people have talked about, oh, you just need to pop up the trim to take out the trunk brace on the Elantra end. No one's actually shown it. So this is kind of what that looks like, basically. It's seven little pop clips in the top. They're going to fight you. You want the little trim tool to really help you out on that take out the two eight mil sockets on the bottom and then you uh, do a very scary um pry and popped out that trim on the top and bottom trim comes out do that for both sides and then now you have access to the trunk brace you can leave the trim out i think at least i'm going to try that and you can just leave it as is so if you ever want to take trunk trunk brace out just drop the seat pop it out done you want it back in there put it back in there you're done you don't have to mess with the trim so it's kind of how that looks like. I've got a box end wrench that fits that proper. I have like my um, adjustable in there. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that to this car. I'm gonna actually get a um, proper set. So get that in. I'll pop out the brace. Um, show you kind of what that looks like. It should be pretty straightforward. Um, I already like undid this a little bit with a socket just to try it. There's no like crazy Loctite good um, BS going on in there. It's not like they've like red Loctited this thing in um, for some crazy reason. No, that that comes out super easy. It's there's no there's no like crazy thread locker on that. So happy to see that for sure. And the way I'm looking at this, I think it looks like that's just a stud. So if that's just a stud. That means unbolted. This just comes out. It should be easy peasy basically at that point. So um, we don't know. That that's a bolt on the other end if it's a bolt on the other end this gets very scary because that bolt's just gonna fall out i think that's a stud if they had 
I trust that Hyundai actually is a nice person and um, if we're designed, designed this is a nice person, those are actually studs, those are not bolts that are gonna fall out on you. So let's see what it looks like when that happens. If they are bolts, then this gets complicated. So you have to figure out where the heck on the back of the fender, not really the back of the fender even, how do you even get access to that? It'd be really weird. So yeah, let's see how that works. Um, but I figured, do a report on what that looks like because um, I figure a lot of people are kind of interested in what that looks like.